I did receive a few questions um, in advance. And so I will go ahead and read those off to you. And the first one is, are letters of recommendation required? And if not, will you still accept them? We would accept them if they are submitted. I am not sure. I guess you can add those as others uh, in the application, other documents. Uh, but uh, generally in the EP program, no uh, requirements uh, exist for letters. So all what we, we look at is the um, transcripts, uh, the GPA, the type of coursework that the, that, that the applicant uh, has uh, taken during their undergrads or if they had another uh, graduate degree, uh, we take that into consideration. Uh, and then if uh, someone has uh, practical uh, experiences in industry, they can submit their CV. It's always uh, welcome, especially if someone graduated a few, uh, a few or a number of years ago. Um, the CV would tell a lot more about the person as compared to the uh, transcript, although the transcript still matters. Um, but the letters are not a requirement, uh, are not something that uh, would uh, weigh in significantly as compared to experience or um, as compared to um, uh, the uh, actual um, education that a person had and, and their GPA. Um, the letters sometimes might help if there is an issue with a student's grade, for instance, and they want to clarify why there is a low grade in something that might be important for us. That might help in, in the decision process, but as I said, it's not a requirement. All right. Thank you for that. Um, the next question from Helen. What qualifies as a technical graduate degree? Does a quantitative economics degree count? Um, a little bit difficult to say it all depends on oh, okay so we're typically looking for engineering related if someone has the background in terms of the coursework that is required for them to be able to succeed within a mechanical engineering graduate level degree master's level degree then that should be sufficient enough all right great the next question from robert i got my bs in mechanical engineering in 20 I'm sorry, in 2005, do I need to revalidate this degree to enroll in the master's program? Was it from the US? If it was from the US, I don't think that there's gonna be a need to validate it, um, but it would be quite important for them to submit a CV that would help us evaluate the, can the, the applicant. Um, 2005 is a long time ago. Um, so we just wanna make sure that the person has been relatively involved in mechanical engineering related activity that when they jump into a master's degree level on mechanical engineering, then they would be able to um, um, regain the memories related to sitting in a classroom and solving problems and all that stuff. Part of it comes from being active in, in, in a mechanical engineering related um, field. Uh, that, so that helps. So a CV would be quite useful in that, ca in that case. All right, great. Robert, I hope that answered your question. I see that you said UC Davis, so yes. Um, what he just said. I don't see any other questions in the Q&A, but I, like, I did receive some questions in advance. How often are courses offered? Would I be able to start in the summer? Yes, so we have a wide array of courses that are offered year long. We have three semesters. Uh, the fall semester, the spring semester, and the summer semester, and the student can start any one of those semesters. Um, the courses are almost offered every year. I think almost all our courses are offered every year. Mike uh, might be able to correct me if I'm wrong on that. Yeah, that's right. And um, some courses are offered every semester. Some courses are offered once a year. Some courses are offered twice a year. And um, so there's a quite variety of courses that that student would, should be able to uh, find a course that they would be interested in or courses that they're interested in every semester uh, to be able to uh, continue their studies. There is a math class that uh, is uh, generally taken first in the curriculum and that is offered spring, summer and fall and multiple sections of it as required to uh, meet the demand. All right, thank you for that, Michael. Um, the next question from Helen, what skills or experience are you interested in seeing on a CV? Experiences related to a mechanical engineering position. So something that shows the reviewers of your application that 
you have expertise in mechanical engineering, you'll be able to understand some of the technical terms that are going to be uh, covered in, in the different courses on a graduate level. Okay, great. The next question from Robert. Um, does Johns Hopkins University offer propulsion engineering program? Propulsion? Yes. Uh, we don't have a separate propulsion engineering program uh, or degree but we have a number of courses that are related uh, across a number of the, of the, of the different EP programs. Um, so I think, I don't, I don't think in mechanical engineering, we have a propulsion focused course yet, although that's one of the things that is on our list of courses to be um, um, hopefully available sometime in the very near future. Um, we are as well in the process of expanding our, our uh, tracks. So as you've seen in the presentation, there are five main tracks. We are as well in the process of, of developing coursework related to an aerospace slash hypersonics type of uh, track, which would cover some uh, propulsion courses. But as I said, right at the moment in mechanical engineering, we don't necessarily have a propulsion course that is currently offered, but hopefully in the very near, near future, we, we should have a few of those available. But I know that a couple of other programs have one or two courses in propulsion that a student might be interested in. All right. Great. Sorry. No other questions in the q and I will go to the questions that we received via email and someone is asking about the cost to complete the graduate degree. Um, and so the actual cost per course is $47.55. So we tell students to budget between $47,000 and $50,000. Um, there are no hidden fees, no additional fees outside of your graduation fee, which is $100. But of course, the cost of books and things are not included in that $47.5. And I will put a link to uh, admissions and aid so you can click that to get more information about how you can finance your graduate degree. So we have any other questions from the people on the call this evening? No other questions? This is a wonderful opportunity to take advantage and ask the chair and program chair um, questions, guys. All right, well, do you all want to add anything before we close out this session? Um, nothing else. As I said, the program continues to evolve. Uh, we are in the process of, of, of uh, initiating a few more tracks that, that are towards space and towards um, hypersonics. Uh, that hopefully will happen within the next few semesters when we get things ready to launch them. Um, but the program is, is, is continue, continuously evolving and, and attracting uh, a number of faculty, both from Hopkins uh, as well as from industry uh, to cover a wealth of, of different types of topics uh, and, and, and hopefully uh, uh, the students that are involved uh, in the program um, will uh, see a good benefit for, um, for their uh, career after they finish their degree. And there are always anyone, if any additional questions pop up afterwards, uh, people are free to reach out to uh, any of the three of us. Yes, yeah. email address jhep at jhu.edu in the chat. So you can shoot an email to that general email. And if it's something specific um, to Mecky, they will make sure that it gets to them. Michael, did you have anything else you wanted to add before we sign out? Um, i just like to say that, I mean, I I uh, have seen a lot of feedback about how um, this has enabled people to uh, to go in different tracks in their career. Um, gotten feedback saying that your courses came up in the interview repeatedly, and uh, I think this is the reason why I got this job offer. And so um, it's uh, you know I think both uh, an enhancement to your existing career and an opportunity to. Uh, um, pursue something else that you might not be working in uh, right now. All right, great. Thank you, Michael. One, Robert just asked for, I'm, I'm thinking you're asking for the archive of this. So we will actually have a recording of, of the PowerPoint presentation 
it will be a production a little cleaner than what was presented today. And that will be up on the YouTube page in a couple of weeks or so. But because you register for this session, you'll get notification when it's up on the page. And so you'll be able to reference that there. Um, I hope that answers your question. If not, feel free to shoot an email to J, no problem, to jhep at jhu.edu. Thank you all for joining us this evening. And we look forward to seeing you in our virtual classrooms. Thank you. Bye. See you.